Let's look at mathematical modeling, uh, basically just modeling with the differential equations, which you're going to see are just derivatives. So suppose a biologist wants to develop an equation that will forecast the population of an endangered animal. By studying data on the population in the past, so I have information from the past, she can try to find a relationship between a population and its rate of change, so derivative. A function that gives the rate of change of the population would be the actual derivative of the function describing the population itself. So we know from working backwards, if we have the um, derivative, we can find the antiderivative, and then we can actually find the total number in the population. A differential equation is an equation that involves an unknown function. This is the big difference. Okay, so in other words, instead of an unknown variable, we're going to actually have an unknown function with a finite number of its derivatives. So if I want to solve the differential equation, which comes up next, um, for my unknown function, I could do this and then have a function to forecast my population. So for example, fish population increases at a rate of 20% per year. Fish are caught by fishermen at a rate of 10 million fish per year. So how does the fish population change over time? Well, this is something you want to write down and remember that your rate of change is going to equal your rate of increase minus your rate of decrease. And as you'll see, we typically call it rate in minus rate out. And my total fish population, my reproduction, the increase, and then my decrease, the rate going out. All right, so if I let P equal the number of fish, million, and T equal time in years, then I can say, well, how is the population changing? Well, a change in the population over change in time dp over dt, it said 20%, okay, so where'd that come from, remember where did that come from, right there, fish population increases at a rate of 20% per year, so that's my 20%, whatever my population is at that time, remember this is a function, so that's like p of t, that's not a variable, that's a function, and then minus the rate going out. So my rate of increase due to breeding, 20% times the current population at a particular time. So a lot of times students like to write it um, as P of T because that is a function. And then rate fish removed by harvest, harvesting is 10 million fish per year. So this is a differential equation that models how the fish population changes. Again, the big key difference here is my unknown quantity is actually a function. So that's the population in terms of time. In other words, P of T. Says so a patient, another example, patient undergoing major surgery is given an antibiotic intravenously at a rate of, so a rate in 85 milligrams per hour. The rate the drug is excreted, the rate out from the body is proportional to the amount present with proportionality constant, um, equal to 0 0.1 if time is in hours. So in other words, 10% of the drug um, is excreted per hour. So we want to write a differential equation. So figure out how the quantity of the drug, the rate in minus the rate out. So that's my rate of change of the amount of the drug. If I let Q equal the quantity of drug in the patient's body at a particular time, that becomes my function, my change in my quantity over my change in time, my rate in, minus 10% of the quantity that's present. All right, so please remember this is a function. So my differential equation, and if you notice this dq over dt, typically the variable on the bottom is the variable you see here, and you don't see that variable. Well, it's there, it's in this function, because that's really q of t. So quantity of the drug increasing, 85 milligrams per hour, quantity decreasing, the 10% of the quantity that is there at a particular time. 
population of San Antonio is growing at about a rate of 2% per year. If I let P be the number of people in San Antonio at a particular time, then my change in population over change in time is just 2% of the population at a particular time. What will happen as time goes on? Well, if I just plug in some population value, notice, of course, the population is going to, my rate of change is going to get faster and faster as my population is increasing. But then it actually, if you notice, the jumps here starts to slow down because it reaches that carrying capacity. And so no growth in the beginning, then it starts increasing, and then the growth starts to slow down. And that's where you see a, a typical exponential growth, but then it starts to move to that logistic growth because you reach the carrying capacity, which shows here population growth rate slows down when the population gets large enough because it's hitting that carrying capacity. So the logistic population growth model, if I have the population of San Antonio at a particular time, and I let K, I know the book used L, now they're using K for carrying capacity. And R is the growth rate of the population of San Antonio when the population's small, so starting out. Then the growth rate's going to change, as we saw on that table, as the population size changes. So if you have a very, very small population, okay, meaning at the very beginning, then your growth rate is just typically whatever the rate is at that time. Think about it. If your population is small, so in other words, here this value is really, really, really small, then this piece right here is going to zero. So you just have the rate times one, which is just the actual rate. If the population grows large, Okay, so in other words, as my population gets close to the, to the carrying capacity, well, if I'm at the carrying capacity, then this would be 1, 1 minus 1, 0, and that's why it's showing the rate um, is equal to approximately 0 because it starts to slow down. So the rate of change of the population growth here, based on my rate times how it's changing, times my population at a particular time. So once again, suppose for San Antonio, we have this 2% per year, and my carrying capacity is 2 million. What will happen in this case as time goes on? Well, as we see with our table, once again, it starts to grow very quickly, that exponential growth, but then it starts to level out at your carrying capacity. Um, Euler's method, you have seen before. We called it the tangent line approximation. We like this because if we have differential equations, we can use it to predict values in the future. So if you remember with the tangent line approximation, we knew a value, we could calculate the rate of change, and then we could predict a little bit further. And again, if you go back in your notes, this is just tangent line approximation. So if I have my change in population over change in time, my population is changing by 2% of whatever the population is at that time. So if I start with an initial population value at a particular time, then I could find the growth rate. Okay, so the rate of growth would be 2% of what the population is at that time. So it's growing at about 26,552 people per year. So that's the growth rate. I could predict the number of people in the next year by taking my initial amount plus the growth rate and then times the gap. Remember, we called this the gap. Again, this is tangent line approximation. What I know how fast it's changing, and then how far you jumped in the change so I could get my prediction value, which is showing once again what I know, my growth rate of the time I know, and then this actual gap, and I can get the next value. So that's what this is saying here. Um, the only big difference, because again, tangent line approximation is this T minus A, we call it step size. Because a lot of times it'll say with a step size of one, a step size of two, that's 
for example, in number of years, if it's two, would be two years later. So here, if I want a step size of H equals one, that's what I just did for one year. And I'm doing this by taking the current year plus how fast the growth rate is changing that year times the 2011 minus 2010, and that's where we're getting the step size of one. So I can use this now, this value for 2011, and then I can keep going. I can say, well, let's use this to predict the next year. So I plug in what I know, 2011. I find my rate of change by taking this value times the percentage again. And then my step size is still one because I'm going 2011 to 2012. And that's what you're seeing here. What I know in 2011 the rate of change, my population times the 2% times the step size. And as you can see, if it's, if it's way before, because we said this carrying capacity was, what, 2 million, then this is going to be the part where it looks very exponential, that growth. All right, what if I change the step size of 2? Well, in this example, that just means jump 2 years. So in other words, if I know the population in 2010 and I know how fast the population is changing, 2%, then I could predict two years later. So what I know, 2010, my change, which is my um, population times my rate of change. So in other words, 2% times the 1,327,606 people. And then times now my step size is times two. So, of course, I could do this versus my prediction from 2011. So remember the last one I did 2010 to 2011, then 2011 to 2012. And as you can see, these are a little different. Which one's more accurate? Well, you're always going to have more accuracy when you have a smaller step size. The bigger step size is just assuming nothing changes. We typically like to do smaller step sizes like 2010 to 2011 and then go back out and see, are we still at this differential equation of 2%? Maybe the population is changing at 2.3% now. And so we like to revisit that. All right, so let's see if we can write some more of these differential equations. As a population of insects grows at a rate proportional to the size of the population. Write a differential equation for the size of the population P as a function of time. A differential equation, so I know this is going to be the change in the population over change in time. Change in population over change in time uh, grows at a rate proportional, we'll call K my proportion, of the current population. All right, so this is, this is just like our last example, 2% of the population. All right, um, is the constant of proportionality positive or negative? Well, there's your key word. The population is growing, so it would be positive. All right, toxins and pesticides can get in the food chain and accumulate in the body. A person consumes, so my rate in, 10 micrograms a day. And then it leaves the body, the toxin leaves the body at 3% every day. We want to write a differential equation for the amount, so the change in the amount of toxin over the change in time. And that's kind of key is to get down first, well, what is changing here? So the change in amount over change in time. I have a rate in 10 micrograms a day. I have a rate out 3% of the amount that's present. You're going to notice that your percentage, your proportion goes on your function. Remember, this is a function. This amount is A of T. It's a function of the amount at a particular time. Alcohol is metabolized and excreted from the body at a rate of about one ounce per hour. If some alcohol is consumed, write a differential equation for the amount of alcohol. So the change in the amount of alcohol over change in time. Notice it says it's leaving the body at a rate of one ounce of alcohol every hour. 
There is no proportion, no percentage that says add a percentage of what's there. It doesn't even give you an amount that's being consumed. So this is just simply leaving the body. The change in the amount over the change in time is leaving the body, is why it's negative, one ounce of alcohol every hour. And that's the section is, again, just setting up the differential equations and then to be able to use them like we did with the population where we can use Euler's method and do the approximation.